Major announcement today from a Valley leader ahead on Eyewitness News Live at 6. Why Sheriff Jer Jerry Keller has decided not to run for re-election. Plus, the pilots of small planes here in the Valley are about to be cleared to fly again, a month after being grounded because of the terrorist attacks. But not everyone is being allowed to fly. See why. And in the wake of more anthrax cases, see what Valley post offices are doing to protect workers and the public. And tonight, George Knapp takes us to a real haunted hotel right here in Nevada. You're watching Eyewitness News at 6 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, Kevin Jennison, and Dave McCann. Sheriff Jerry Keller has led the Metropolitan Police Department for the past seven and a half years. But that reign is going to come to an end. He announced today he's not running for re-election. The sheriff led Metro during the booming 90s when the Valley saw unprecedented growth. He helped the department to keep up. But Keller's department weathered serious image problems. In 1996, one of his officers, Ron Mortensen, shot and killed a Las Vegas man in a drive-by shooting. That officer was convicted and sentenced to prison. But more recently, Sheriff Keller reassured the public of Metro's preparedness in the face of possible terrorist attacks. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Polly Gonzalez in for Paula Francis. After 33 years in public service, Clark County Sheriff Jerry Keller says he wants to spend more time with his family. He's decided not to seek re-election. Keller made the announcement today at a news conference at City Hall. The twice-elected sheriff says he decided not to run after considering the toll campaigning would have had on his family and his ability to serve the public. The sheriff says the September 11th attack on America also played a role in his decision. Keller says the seven years that he's been sheriff have been the happiest of his professional career. You know that when I retire, I could be prouder of no achievement more in my professional life than if I had the chance to lead almost 4,000 men and women of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Leaders of the American Civil Liberties Union have clashed with Sheriff Keller about racial profiling and the occasional bad officer in the department. But Gary Peck of the ACLU says the disagreements were never personal. He believes Keller has improved the department. There are many good things he has done, and, and we certainly, on a personal level, bear him no ill will. Keller will continue running the 10th largest police department in the country until his term expires on December 31st. For thousands of Las Vegans, Jerry Keller is the only sheriff they've ever known. He was elected to office in 1994 and then re-elected again in 1998. Since then, the entire Valley's population has grown. Eyewitness News reporter Michael Geeser joins us now with a look back at the career of Jerry Keller. Michael. Yeah, be assured that when he began his law enforcement career, the Valley was even smaller than yeah. in 1994 when he was elected sheriff. Keller's career started in 1969 as a patrol officer with what was then the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Needless to say, much has changed since then. Perhaps Sheriff Jerry Keller's lasting legacy will be the way he involved the community in local policing. It was Keller who started the first Tuesday program, where citizens could go to their local substation to meet with police. In the 1994 sheriff's race, Keller received a groundswell of support from his fellow officers. During that hotly contested campaign, Keller received the endorsement of the Nevada Conference of Police and Sheriffs. This was his campaign speech. I'm going to take out a layer of top bureaucracy, the position of assistant sheriff. That'll give me a half a million dollars to put on the front end operations of the Metropolitan Police Department. Keller's tough talk earned him respect among the Metro ranks. Respect that would be tested on several occasions throughout his administration. One was the videotape beating of a suspect by three Metro officers. Another incident involved two Metro officers who allegedly fired a gun while off duty. The gunshot killed a man and one of the officers was sentenced for murder. Still, through all of it, Keller remained loyal to his department and didn't mind telling the public about Metro's virtues. We have 2,500 plus employees, 1,300 of them carry a badge, and 600 of them are out there working in the streets in, in uniform and black and white cars, and this department is doing a, a yeoman's job. A yeoman's job, a description Keller supporters will use to describe his eight-year effort as sheriff. Keller has always had the support of local residents because he is one himself. 
He graduated from Western High School in 1964 and from UNLV in 1969. Among the other things he'll be remembered for is starting the bike patrol with Metro, which has become so popular, as we all know now, that hotels have their security guards on bikes. Wow. So we can attribute that to Jerry Keller. Thanks, Michael. Nice guy. Thanks. Keller's announcement that he's not running for a third term leaves the race for sheriff wide open. Some of the people mentioned as possible candidates come from within the department. Deputy Chief Bill Young, a 23-year veteran with Metro who's headed the SWAT team, the vice unit, the jail, and currently heads special operations is one of them. Also, Captain Gary Schofield, who formerly headed the SWAT unit and currently heads the training bureau. The Taliban have said they have shot down um, uh, at least two helicopters, which is false. They have not. They have indicated that they have captured some Americans, which is false. They have not. In the war on terrorism today, the U.S. military battled the Taliban from the air and what they call misinformation from the terrorists. We have local team coverage on the effects of the war straight ahead. U.S. jets pounded Taliban positions near the front lines outside the Afghan capital today. Defense Secretary Rumsfeld says there is no evidence that the U.S. and British jets hit a hospital, as claimed by the Taliban. New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani swore in a new class of probationary firefighters today, the first since the attacks on America killed 340 New York firefighters. Small aircraft pilots are getting their wings back. The FAA has reopened airspace for private planes in Las Vegas and five other cities. Eyewitness News is live. Yetta Gibson joins us from the North Las Vegas airport with more. Yetta. Polly, some of the smaller planes that you have been seeing flying around lately were able to do so because they are considered instrument-based planes. That means pilots are actually able to use radar systems and other equipment to navigate the planes. Now, some of these small planes that do not have that kind of equipment was not able to fly until today, and still some of those are grounded. It's just been sitting there because I can't fly. Gary Gabert is thrilled. He can finally get back to doing what he loves. I just fly for, you know, for my fun and enjoyment and, and uh, fly around air shows on my, my other airplane. And, <laughs> he says although he supports the government's cautiousness with U.S. airspace since the September 11th attacks, he never understood why smaller planes like his were banned from the skies and why it has taken so long for the restrictions to be lifted. You know, it was, it was airliners that flew into the buildings, and it was student pilots that was flying them. It wasn't little airplanes, and it wasn't certified pilots. Pilot Joe Meriden feels the same way. We don't really fully understand why. But his situation is just the opposite of Gaybird's. I'm still grounded, yes. The FAA still restricts specialty operators from the sky. For example, ones that fly around advertisement banners or businesses like his where paying passengers are flown around for leisure. I can go out and fly the airplane. I can put two people in it and go flying, but I can't do it uh, commercially, which means I can't charge for the service. Meanwhile, some flight schools are also reaping benefits from the lifted restrictions. Good afternoon, First Flight Aviation. Small aircraft rentals account for 50% of their business. And now that private pilots can come and go as they please, the phones are ringing again. We're getting booked, but we have... Schedules are already beginning to fill up for the next couple of weeks. Now, the plane, these planes are now allowed to fly in what is called enhanced Class B airspace, and that is essentially the space below where the commercial planes fly. Las Vegas, the city of Las Vegas, rather, was one of five cities that opened this space back up today. Yetta Gibson, Eyewitness News, live. Thank you, Yetta. Sure. And there are some aircraft that are still grounded, including our own Chopper 8. The FAA is not allowing news helicopters in the valley to fly, but we're not alone. The news helicopters in several cities have not been allowed to fly since the September 11th attack. Two mail carriers in Washington, D.C. have been diagnosed with anthrax. Washington, D.C. and investigators are are looking into the deaths of two other postal workers. Now mail carriers and post office workers across the country and here in Las Vegas are keeping an even closer eye on the mail. Eyewitness News is live. Colleen May is at the main branch of the post office on Sunset Road. Colleen. Well, Gary, the attacks on September 11th not only changed the way the U.S. Postal Service does business, but it also costed a lot of
It was already $1 billion in debt. Now it's prepared to ask Congress for financial assistance, and that money is something that post offices all across the country could use, including the ones here in southern Nevada. We probably could use some extra money. There's no doubt about it. The U.S. Postal Service is part of the federal government, but it doesn't receive tax money to operate. With the discovery of anthrax and the closure of mail facilities in Washington, D.C., it could use the additional funding from Congress. Locally, the main branch on Sunset Road was shut down more than a week ago after an anthrax scare. It turned out to be nothing, but cost the post office money. We shut the plant down for about an hour and a half. We figured it cost the Postal Service just for that shutdown here locally around $200,000 just to shut down the plant for that amount of time. So you can figure now with employee salaries, the, the lack of being able to process during that period of time, the end time spent by carriers as far as delivering on overtime. The U.S. Postal Service is taking extra precautions, carefully screening its mail and offering gloves and masks to its employees. I'm not that nervous about it. <laughs> when the time comes, if, if it hits closer to home, I guess, then maybe I will. But right now, it, I don't think we're a main target. It is a pretty hazardous job. A lot of people don't realize it. Master General says he expects the deficit to grow even more because mail volume has been down since September 11th. Postal officials say they also expect to be shelling out more money to investigate those cases of anthrax that have been sent through the U.S. mail. I'm Colleen May, Eyewitness News, live. Colleen, thank you very much. The state's legislative committee on health care held a hearing to find out just how ready we are for a bioterrorism attack. After more than an hour of testimony from disease specialists, it became apparent Nevada is not prepared. Eyewitness News reporter Lisa Johnson was at the hearing and she has more. Uh, there are literally hundreds if not thousands of infectious agents, so which ones are of greatest concern from a terrorist threat perspective? State epidemiologist Dr. Randall Todd testified that more needs to be done before Nevada can say it's prepared for a bioterrorism attack. He and other state officials testifying in Carson City via closed circuit TV told legislative members that the state is prepared for most disasters, but not bioterrorism. Biological agents, unlike these conventional kinds of weapons or even chemical weapons, can be disseminated in a very covert fashion so there would be no immediate knowledge that an event had occurred. And without immediate knowledge, there can be no immediate response. And in a short time, a contagious pathogen could spread and kill thousands. The state epidemiologist added that most doctors in Nevada have no training in treating biological attack victims. However, the federal government is prepared to help and has stockpiled antibiotics that could be in Nevada within 12 hours. But that would only help in non-contagious diseases like anthrax. Officials are not prepared to contain a contagious virus like smallpox, especially in a valley where 1.3 million live and millions more visit. That was Lisa Johnson reporting. Las Vegas emergency officials say we are further along than most other cities in bioterrorism preparedness. The city is currently setting up a metropolitan medical response system. It's a program to set up a treatment area anywhere to handle a medical emergency that would overwhelm the Valley's 11 hospitals. The metropolitan medical response system should be in place by next year. Meanwhile, the state's epidemiologist has a list of 10 things he says the state and the country need to do immediately to be better prepared for a chemical attack. First, state officials must understand the difference between a natural disaster and a terrorist attack, and that the response to each is different. National officials should stockpile even more antibiotics and continually update them. The state needs to improve its ability to find out how many people have been infected following an attack. Public health officials should improve the study of infectious diseases. Disease labs need to be improved and expanded. The roles of everyone involved in fighting a bioterrorist attack should be better defined. How information is released to the public should be improved to prevent panic. The state needs to do live bioterrorism drills. Everyone, including citizens, need to be better informed about bioterrorism to be better prepared. A piece of Las Vegas history is scheduled to come crashing down overnight. More on the Desert Inn is coming up. Plus, a haunted hotel in Nevada. George Knapp takes us inside the Goldfield Hotel for an early Halloween haunting. And later in this hour, police in Henderson say they've broken up a check fraud ring. See how that could make your mail safer. But first, here's Kevin Jennison with a first look at your weather. Kevin. All right, Polly and Gary, we've got a cold front taking aim in Nevada. We'll tell you how that's.
impact your week. We'll look at all your neighborhood weather too. That and the seven day forecast just a couple minutes away. Eyewitness News will be right back. You're watching Eyewitness News with Paula Francis and Gary Waddell. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by the MGM Grand, the city of entertainment. The Dodge Durango. It not only hauls almost four tons, it's the only SUV with a V8 for around 24 grand. Oh, great. Stuck behind another one of these. Now get 0% financing and no payments till 2002 on Dodge Durango. Thousands of people work at America's gold mines. From planning to final reclamation, safety and environmental protection are overriding concerns. Training and commitment have led to a safety record that stands among the best. Guided by state and federal laws, they're protecting wildlife, water, and air. And gold's unmatched reliability serves many technologies, including electronics, medicine, even space. Nothing works like gold. Gold mined in America. Children with Down syndrome are a gift of life. The buddy walk was just an unbelievable experience. There was just celebration all over, all around us. As a mom, it just really touched my heart. I tell everybody about how good Walmart has been to us. Their people came out and walked. They provided lunch. At Walmart, we have become partners. They love our kids. That's what we all want, is our children to be accepted for who and what they are. I was very proud of, of our walk. People cared about our kids. It's just the same old thing. I need adventure, excitement. I'm suffocating. Okay. You can drive. Spice things up. The Hyundai Santa Fe. V6 power, full-time four-wheel drive, and the freedom of America's best warranty plan, the Santa Fe. Don't even think about it. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by the Courtesy Automotive Group. Countdown is on early tomorrow morning. Part of the historic Desert Inn will come crashing down. Eyewitness News is live. Renata Troiani joins us from the Desert Inn with the story. Renata. Gary, we're actually at the New Frontier parking lot. That is right across the street from the Desert Inn. It's the South Tower that's actually going to come crashing down. You can see the black tarp that's been draped across the bottom portion. This building is ready to come down to make way for Steve Wynn's new property, La Rev. Now, the implosion is slated to happen about 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. People will no doubt be out here watching, but they won't be able to watch, watch along Las Vegas Boulevard between Spring Mountain Road and the Stardust. That area is going to be closed at 1 a.m., won't be reopened until 4.30 tomorrow morning. Now, Clark County fire crews will be standing by, but they don't anticipate any problems. So in the Nevada, it's, a, it's almost a, I don't want to say common occurrence, but it happens regularly. But it doesn't mean there's not some risk involved, certainly. We know it's going to be professionally run. We're working with other local agencies or regional area agencies so that uh, if it goes at all according to plan, uh, it should be a pretty... Uh, short, sweet, and simple thing. Now, of course, the implosion won't be quite the show that we've seen at other implosions. That's because most of this building has already been taken down. Really, there's only a shell left. The South Tower may be coming down tomorrow morning, but so far, Steve Wynn has not released a lot of details about his new project, and so far, no word on just when that new project, La Rev, will open. Renata Troiani, Eyewitness News, live. All right, thank you very much, Renata. We have an update tonight on that downtown entertainment complex. According to a Las Vegas Sun report, Neonopolis is now 70% leased. The project should open in April of 2002. It will include theaters, shops, and restaurants. Only 25 more tenants are needed to fill the space in that project. Nevada is well known for its ghost towns, but what about its ghosts? One of the best known of our state's old mining towns is throwing a shindig this weekend and is hoping to use what it says are real-life ghosts to 
ghost stories to attract Halloween visitors. George Knapp is here with the rest of the story, George. Yeah, this is fun. This, this Halloween season, of course, you can visit one of those fun for the family haunted houses that spring up around town each year, or you can check out the real thing. The historic Goldfield Hotel in Goldfield, Nevada, north of Las Vegas, has been closed down for decades and is said by locals to be haunted, not only by one spirit, but by many. This kind and visitors will be allowed inside to look around for themselves. Locals have uh, talked for years about seeing uh, people in the windows and uh, seeing unusual lights when the building has been vacant. I was a little skeptical, but I've, I've become a believer. Harry Keene isn't exactly your gullible, wild-eyed spook chaser type. As the former district attorney of Esmeralda County, he's learned to recognize con artists and thin stories. But like nearly everyone in town, he thinks there really is something supernatural about the Goldfield Hotel. Keene had his own experience one dark there, night. It seemed like something was coalescing in my head, something like, Harry, Harry, calling me, which I didn't like at all. So I, I took what I thought was the only rational approach. I ran unplugged and ran downstairs. If there is such a thing as a ghost, then the Goldfield Hotel would seem a natural abode. The hotel is the heart and soul of a town that itself is a ghost of what it once was. A lot of people died here, some under mysterious circumstances, and several of those deaths occurred in the Goldfield Hotel. Some people were treated very badly here, you know, whether they were kept captive or um, their money was stolen, their gold was stolen, and I think there's some angry people, <laughs> or spirits, or... As an employee of the county, Linda Toner doesn't want to publicly endorse the existence of ghosts in the hotel or anywhere else, but she acknowledges it's a belief that's widely held. Regular, serious people who, yes. who say this place is haunted. Um, yes. From elected officials to school representatives, yes. Deputy sheriffs? We have deputies who will not come into the hotel. Unlike some reputedly haunted places, believers say there's more than one spirit prowling the murky hallways and empty rooms of the Goldfield Hotel. It's strange enough walking through here in the daytime, but when the sun starts going down and the wind blows outside, you don't know what you might see or hear. This is the most haunted room in the, in the hotel, room 109. Room 109 is the coldest, darkest, and spookiest room in the hotel. Its very walls appear to be bleeding. According to the former owner of the place, it was in 109 that a young prostitute, supposedly impregnated by mining tycoon George Wingfield, was held against her will to prevent a scandal. She wound up having the child. Supposedly she was chained to a radiator in this room, and her and the child wound up dying here. One previous owner claims to have seen the spirit of the woman who died. She claimed that every time she came in here, her blood would run cold. And I think it was along this wall here, she claimed to have seen a 19-year-old or so blonde woman with her arms raised, just crying, just, just an apparition. And uh, she could never stay in this room. She, she ran out. Her book details having psychics coming in here and identifying this as a very, very, very disturbed room. Uh, a lot of them called it evil. The hotel has been closed to guests since the end of World War II. Attempts to renovate and reopen it have always failed. Harry Keene hopes to keep the hotel and the town alive by staging special events there. This weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the hotel will be open for haunted tours, as well as a big Halloween party and Nevada Day events. If you'd like more information, you can call this number, 775-485-6352. Part of the proceeds from this weekend's events will go toward historical preservation in Goldfield. We also have some information about the hotel and the town on our KLAS website, klastv.com. And tonight at 11 o'clock, strange stories about apparitions caught on film inside the hotel. Gary, I know you've been there a lot of times. I've been in that it's hotel. A, yeah, it's, it's a great old building, it's haunted a, or not. It's an amazing place. It's a wonderful building. Goldfield's a wonderful place, It's too. a great town. It'd be a good trip this weekend. Thanks, George. See ya. He's no ghost. He's really here. Kevin also. Dennison with the weather. <laughs> We yep, some, you're solid. We have <laughs> some stories to tell, certainly. We've got a lot of weather to talk about. Some changes for the Las Vegas Valley before this week is out, but certainly not this evening. Another spectacular evening in progress. The sun has just gone down. Now things will change with that dramatically as we get toward the weekend when daylight savings time ends. That's not until this coming weekend, late Saturday night or Sunday morning. A little glow in the sky as we look out from our camera 
on top of Boulder Station right now. Here's real-time neighborhood weather. We'll begin up on the north end of town uh, at Camino El Dorado and Ann Road at Antonello Elementary. It is 77 degrees, humidity at 18 percent, light breeze. 75 in Boulder City right now. We'll head back in town near Eastern and the St. Rose Parkway, south end of town, and even 80 degrees still. And near Flamingo and Boulder Highway also, and even 80 degrees. Other neighborhood temperatures still 83 near Eastern and Charleston, a degree warmer up near Cary and Hollywood. Green Valley comes in at 74 degrees, and it's 76 near Windmill and Paradise. Outside of town, already dipping down into the 40s on the mountain. The Prompsters at 75. Lake Mead is a degree warmer than that. Here are your peak wind gusts today, and not a whole lot of wind today, but I show you these numbers because they'll be increased by 10 to 15, maybe even 20 miles per hour by tomorrow at this time. Searchlight had a gust of 20. High temperatures today, the range was anywhere from 85 to 91 degrees. That one at John Beatty Elementary near Windmill in Paradise. And outside the valley, the highs anywhere from 63 on the mountain. Laughlin hit an even 100 degrees. At McCarran today, the top temperature was 85, half a dozen above normal. 60 was the morning low also a little bit above normal. And around the country, we've got some pretty potent thunderstorms in the Midwest. In fact, from Michigan back down toward Chicago and into the Plain State, some of these thunderstorms producing winds gusting over 70 miles per hour. Also some pretty good hailstones there too. Eastern Colorado getting a few showers and thunderstorms, and then it's smooth sailing all the way back home. That'll probably continue through tomorrow. However, We've got a pretty good cold front right there, all set to slide into not only California, but Nevada, and a good blast of cool air behind it. And we can tell this air is cooler because you see those freckled clouds. That is indicating the colder air. That's going to slide on down. Now, the bulk of this will miss us to the north, but we'll get enough of it to cool down. So instead of being in the 80s, we'll see temperatures in the 70s by the middle of the week, and it will get windy. Here's your forecast for tonight. Clear and 56 for the low temperature. Then tomorrow, we'll start out calm, but we do expect some breezes in the afternoon. Look for a high of 80 degrees, maybe a gust or two to 25 miles per hour late in the day, and more likely tomorrow night. The winds will get a little stronger on Wednesday. That's bringing in the cooler air, with a high only in the mid-70s Wednesday and Thursday. Enjoy those two days of autumn, because that's it. Right back to 80 degrees come Friday. And we were back out on the bus earlier today. In fact, had a good time out there in Summerlin. Visited some third graders out at Ober Elementary School, and there they are, making some goofy faces and all, and waving. Good, good group. I enjoy talking weather with them, and they were very sharp at answering the questions as well. So I want to thank them for their hospitality, and I wish them luck in their travels down the road. The third graders at Ober Elementary, their 15 seconds of fame is up. Thanks. <laughs> and a lot of fun. Thank you for having me out there. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Dave McCann is here. Tell us all about sports. Big basketball game here this weekend. Everybody happy, huh? Yeah, I imagine there were a few young fans, the Laker fans, over there at Ober Elementary School. A lot of fans turned out in big numbers Saturday. And if the Thomas and Mack Center has its way, they'll have reason to turn out again and again. Coming up, details on what's next for the Lakers and Las Vegas. Also ahead, if the Rebels are going to beat Wyoming this weekend, They'll have to do it without Dominique Dorsey. Sports is next here on Channel 8. Neighborhood Weather is sponsored by Carina Corporation. We build the homes you see in your dreams. This is one sale you don't want to miss. That's right, Florence. It's National Care Stand Month at Cloud Carpet, where you can save on DuPont Stain Master Carpet at the best price ever. There's no reason to shop anywhere else. National Care Stand Month by DuPont Stain Master at the Cloud Store near you. This is the 2002 Accord from Honda. As you might expect, it comes with a very impressive array of stand... Sometimes, you just want to cut to the chase. And best of all, now you can lease the 2002 Accord LX for $239 a month for 39 months. The Accord LX from Honda. Once in a generation comes a voice that has the power to move you, to touch you, to leave you wanting for more. Take it up now, take it up now. And I get stronger every day. When I leave. Clint Holmes, the voice of Vegas. Exclusively at Harry's. You'll never be able to buy Karastan carpet by DuPont Stain Master at a better price. Karastan chooses the most fashionable colors from around the world. Karastan carpet by DuPont Stain Master. And only during National Karastan Month at the Cloud Carpet Store near you. 
We'll talk to military expert John Alexander tonight on Eyewitness News at 6.30, right here on Channel 8. The new collection is a triumph, just dripping with vibrant flair. And I love the reinterpretation of the front and back color covers from sassy to sublime. Custom ringtones strike a retro chord. Right now, Singular is giving you twice as much. Buy this hip new Nokia and get another one free. Plus, ask about our unlimited nights and weekend plans. Singular Wireless, what do you have to say? The Roman aqueducts have stood here since 145 BC, able to endure centuries because of an engineering marvel, the arch. A curved structure so incredibly strong that even when great pressure is applied to it, it holds its shape. A design with such strength and integrity that to this day, modern man has yet to improve upon it. Kings played in front of a sold-out crowd Saturday at the Thomas and Mac, and the two main attractions did not disappoint. Kobe and Shaq brought the Lake Show to Las Vegas. Kobe scored 30, Shaq had 21 and 10 rebounds. Lakers lost the game, but the Kobe and Shaq show lived up to its billing. Now what's next? Lakers have one more game left on their three-year deal with the Thomas and Mac. That means they'll be back next year for sure, and Thomas and Mac officials say they'll begin negotiating a new three-year deal with the team in the very near future. And look for that one to be one of the easiest deals to make. The Lakers love Las Vegas, and local fans love having them here, and it looks like they'll be making the annual visit for a very long time. UNLV can still become bowl eligible, but to do it, they'll need to win their remaining four games. First up, Wyoming on Saturday in Laramie. The Rebels will play without tailback Dominique Dorsey. He sprained both of his ankles on that play against Colorado State. As for the battle cry in practice, it's all about details. Uh, some anger, I think some anger at ourselves. Uh, you know, just getting back down to work and doing better and, and uh, uh, just taking out our frustrations uh, and and playing harder, uh, you know, the, or more consistently, you know, play harder more often. I guess you might say in a game, uh, uh, those things. It was my pleasure to MC the proceedings this afternoon. And for the record, I did tell a joke, and there was reported widespread laughter throughout the room. We'll hear more from the Rebels tonight at 11. The first BCS polls out tonight. Oklahoma's ranked number one. Nebraska's number two. Those two teams play on Saturday. UCLA is third, followed by Miami and Virginia Tech. Biggest surprise in the top ten is Washington State. Those Cougars are ranked tenth. Coming up in 20 minutes, she may not score the most points on the UNLV women's basketball team, but Constance Jinx is the engine that makes them go. We'll visit with Constance later in the hour. A good player right there. Great team. Look forward to that. I'll save the joke for 11 maybe if we have some extra right. time. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> wrestle it out of you before then. Thanks, right. Dave. There is more news straight ahead. Another person is diagnosed with a potentially deadly form of anthrax. But as thousands of mail carriers worried about their health, the latest coming up. Plus, our military expert John Alexander will have more on the U.S. military's efforts on the ground in Afghanistan. And a group here in the Valley accused of washing checks and stealing money is now under arrest. Eyewitness News Live at 6.30 starts now. Two Washington postal workers have died and authorities are trying to determine if they had been exposed to anthrax. Thanks for staying with us. There are reports the postal workers died of symptoms consistent with anthrax. Many working on Capitol Hill are worried. Both employees worked in a mail facility which handles mail for the area around Capitol Hill. We have two postal workers who work in the Brentwood mail facility that have expired. We have one of those gentlemen who has expired in the Greater Southeast Community Hospital here in Washington, D.C. With respect to the gentleman from Greater Southeast, we have preliminary test results that are suspicious. We do not have a confirmation. 
Two other workers at that same facility have tested positive for the inhaled form of anthrax, and nine others have developed anthrax symptoms in the Washington, D.C. area. Hazmat teams have been doing environmental sweeps of Capitol Hill after a letter with anthrax was delivered to Senator Tom Daschle's office. American forces continued to strike at Taliban frontline positions today. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld expressed anger at leaks about special forces entering Afghanistan last week. Officials aren't saying if the U.S. will cease the campaign during Ramadan, that's the Muslim month of fasting in November. The Taliban claims it shot down two U.S. helicopters and that uh, an American plane's hit a hospital in Kabul. The Pentagon is denying both of those reports. Today, Army Rangers expressed their sympathies to the families of two Rangers in a helicopter crash this weekend. John and Christopher's death, deaths will not be in vain. Their ultimate sacrifice while performing their duties in support of a combat operation only reinforce our resolve to protect the American way of life. The first U.S. soldier killed in the war on terrorism during a machine gun accident was buried at Arlington National Cemetery today. The war has taken a different turn. On Friday, ground troops went into Afghanistan. We spoke with our military expert earlier today about what that means for the war effort. News today that the American ground forces attacked Mohammed Omar's headquarters, his home. Uh, what kind of significance is that? Well, it has major significance. First of all, it meant that Americans are willing to put their boots on the ground and ex accept casualties if necessary there. Secondly, and not reported in the U.S., is that this uh, palace was considered to be invincible. And the Soviets had gone after it for several years. Of course, they were advancing on the ground. The difference was we took the invincible place in a matter of two hours. What does this do to the, the terrorist morale when something like that happens? Well, we're hearing some interesting reports out of there. I understand the Taliban has actually hung uh, three of the chieftains who are reported of uh, supporting the U.S. intelligence. Uh, I suspect that's unlikely, but it does indicate that there's a lot of internal uh, turmoil and strife going on. You'll be able to hear more of the interview tonight on Eyewitness News Live at 11. Well, the debate is raging in Washington over how to improve the nation's security. Joining us with his perspective is Eyewitness News political analyst Richard Bryan and Senator of the Congress is calling for the federal government to take over security screening at uh, airports, the nation's airports, and the president is opposed. Well, it's actually the, the Senate passed overwhelmingly 100 to zip the airport security bill which did include federalizing all of those employees and those are the individuals that when you're going through and having your bag screened uh, are currently many of them were senior citizens and others who there's some questions to whether they have enough training and background and so the overwhelming public support has been to federalize them and that's the position that the that the senate took the house leadership has taken a different position the president's kind of in the middle i think he would sign the legislation if it came to his desk but he doesn't want to part company with the Republican leadership in the House. Ultimately, I think it's going to be pretty hard for the House to resist the federalizing efforts because I think the public wants, as you say, safety and security. Those are the operative words, Polly. How far can they go in, in checking security and making airports secure before they start encroaching on individual rights? Well, it's always a balance. And uh, during times of uh, national crisis, people are concerned. The anthrax stories that you've carried, other mm -hmm. things that have happened, people are concerned. And with that kind of anxiety, all of a sudden people are prepared, I think, to sacrifice some of their civil liberties for protection. And you clearly don't want to go too far. But we've been screening, you know, for nearly 30 years now, and I think improved security measures at the airport, by and large, are not offensive and likely to result in intrusion on our civil rights. It's a question of how to effectively do it, to screen the people who work at airports and to make sure that the procedures are uniform. I've traveled a lot in the last two weeks, and obviously everybody's trying to get, you know, acquainted with this new system. But the procedures are different at different airports. Right. And for people that travel a lot, that's a bit frustrating, although all of us understand the need for greater security. We agree. Thank you. Thank Senator. you very much, Paulie. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Senator. Today, Clark County Sheriff Jerry Keller announced he will not be seeking re-election next year. Here's the latest on tonight's top stories. Keller has been sheriff since 1995, but he says it's time for someone else to head the 10th largest police department in the country. The longtime sheriff says the September 11th attacks did affect his decision. Keller still has 14 months in office. 
Incidents of anthrax among postal workers on the East Coast have many postal workers all across the country taking extra precautions. Postal services made gloves and masks available to workers. The back mail room of the post office is now only accessible to employees. U.S. Postal Service is among the businesses asking Congress for financial aid. Private planes grounded September 11th are slowly starting to fly again. Pilots have been restricted for the last month and a half, and specialty flyers are still restricted. Some pilots say they still don't understand why they were restricted because the attacks didn't involve private planes. The lifting of the restrictions is helping flight schools resume normal schedules again. Police have broken up a criminal ring passing counterfeit checks here in the valley. Coming up, we'll have a look at how these suspects have been cheating local residents and businesses. And later in tonight's medical breakthroughs, a new European drug being tested in the U.S. offers hope for some cancer patients. Coming up on the next ET, Diane Sawyer in Afghanistan. The investigation that landed the famous reporter under a veil. I'll start out like this, and we'll see how far we get. Then Dr. Bill, what he asked this woman about herself that made her cry. I see a disgusting, evil person. Plus a mystery celebrity wedding. We're with the bride-to-be as she tries on wedding dresses. And the connection between Ray Romano and King of Queens, Kevin James. Next ET, tonight at 7 on Channel 8. Freedom should be accessible to everyone. That's why you can now get 0% financing on Cheap Grand Cherokee and Cheap Wrangler. And if you buy now, you'll make no monthly payments for 90 days. And while you can't put a price on freedom, you have to admit it's a pretty good deal. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. I love my work. I really have the best job in the world. Hey, how are you? Everyone that I have ever met likes everyday low prices. I know if I came here, I got the best deal. You can go into Walmart and know it's a huge team effort to ensure that you're getting these low prices. It makes me feel like I've got somebody on my side. On our 39th anniversary and every day of the year, always. When I walk out of here with my receipt, I see my savings. Everyone likes to save money. It makes you feel good. best. It's what you do for your family every day. And it's what Vons has believed in for 95 years. Vons, giving our best. Arizona Charlie's introduces Triple Cash Back. New Charlie Rewards members earn Triple Cash Back up to $100 guaranteed. Wait, did you hear that? Play your favorite games and earn Triple Cash Back for the first three weeks as a new slot club member. It's that simple. That's up to $100 cash back guaranteed. So get over to Arizona Charlie's East or West and get cash back times three. Three times the fun, three times the action, three times the cash back only at Arizona Charlie's Casino. Henderson police have cracked a forgery ring operating in the valley. Richard Napolitano and Allison Bernstein were arrested on forgery and burglary charges. Police say the two tried to cash counterfeit checks at Sunset Station. Police then searched a home on Tamarack Drive in Henderson. There, detectives found fake IDs, computer equipment, and software and paper for printing checks. Detectives arrested Mickey Giuliano, Breck Smith, and Sharon Gretterman on numerous forgery and felony counts. They're ripping off basically a lot of businesses and um, victims throughout the city. Um, a lot of the checks right here you'll see are personal checks. These are real checks. Um, unfortunately, we're trying to figure out where those checks actually originated from. Chemicals used to erase the writing off checks were also found as evidence. Police believe there are more suspects involved. A generous donation to the local food bank couldn't have come at a better time. The Community Food Bank of Clark County is working to replenish its stores in time for the holidays. Workers at the food bank are handling many more clients these days. And now the city has given the food bank $13,000 to help ease the situation. Uh, we're going to use it to assist the charities that normally help people uh, through their food pantries. So we want to be able to make sure they have food to cover their needs and, and just not be overwhelmed by what's going on right now with the displaced workers. 
You can also help by dropping off non-perishable food donations at the Community Food Bank. That's at 4601 East Cheyenne. Well, temperatures may cool down a little bit in the next few days. Kevin Janison will have the forecast when we come back. And in medical breakthroughs tonight, a look at how a new cancer treatment is changing lives. To help keep America rolling, here's an important announcement from your local Pontiac dealers. Until the end of October, Pontiac will offer qualified buyers 0% APR GMAC financing for 60 months on every new 2001 Grand Am, Grand Prix, Sunfire and Firebird, every Aztec, and Bonneville. Interest-free financing for five years on new 2001 Pontiacs. In a small way, it's our way of saying, let's keep America rolling. See your local Pontiac dealer for details. Remember, anyone who works on home requires a contractor's license, and this includes the installation and repair of TV satellite dishes. Protect your investment. Only hire a licensed contractor. The Shinta, Las Vegas Entertainment, the way it ought to be. It's all about great music, side-splitting comedy, and hilarious impressions. The Shintas, music and comedy with a twist. It begins suddenly. My heartbeat quickens. I have chest pains. I begin to sweat and shake. I'm dizzy. I have trouble breathing. I think this time I really might die. Sometimes I wonder which is worse, the panic attack or my fear of the next one. If you have frequent panic attacks, call 888-44-PANIC to learn about a research study testing an investigational medication for panic disorder. No one should have to live in fear. Here's something you might not know. The Toyota Avalon seats six. Six? Six. Six. Huh. And I'm talking six life-sized people. That's right. It's actually the roomiest sedan Toyota's ever built. Mm-hmm. Right now, you can save up to $1,500 on value packages. Good stuff like leather seats, alloy wheels, CD player, the works. Who's driving? At Channel 8, we're committed to the weather. That's why we created Neighborhood Weather. Neighborhood Weather gives you 24-hour internet access to the most current conditions in your area. And we can keep you updated up to the minute during every newscast. Neighborhood Weather, every day on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, every minute on KLASTV.com. More than 56,000 Americans die each year from colorectal cancer. On average, patients are given three to five years to live. A cancer treatment available in Europe is now being tested in a nationwide study here in the United States and is proving to be beneficial for some patients with advanced colorectal cancer. Paula Francis has more. Dear Troopers, we are praying today that God will bless Tammy God and that she's everything we are going through because God is here and not somewhere else. Support for Tammy Laguna comes from across the world. A family friend started Tammy's troop on the internet. When I'm feeling weak, it, it makes me feel stronger to, to make me know that I can fight it. The fight began five days after her 30th birthday when Tammy found out she had colorectal cancer that spread to her liver. It was shock. You know, I was in shock for, for a while. And that's the cancer in the liver. That's what it looks like. Dr. Lee Zengabot says Tammy did not respond to standard chemotherapy. As part of a nationwide study, she was put on the drug oxalplatin. We have had some really good luck with some patients and not with Treatment. others. The drug's side effects include nausea, increased risk of infection, and nerve sensitivity to cold. And the Miles unpleasant part is that you open up the refrigerator, grab a can of soda, and suddenly you're seeing stars. After Tammy's go. first two treatments the on the drug, her tumor no shrank 30%. I would have been happy if it stayed the same. If it just didn't grow at all, that's really a triumph as far as my stage cancer. Tammy's green husband, Ray, calls green. it the first of many triumphs for his wife. She definitely is amazing. And for uh, her to have the courage to do what she does, it, it actually inspires me. Can you help Eeyore find his tail? Yeah. Yeah, Tammy says her first job enough. right now is being mom to and her son, Luke. <laughs> her second job, beating cancer. Paula Francis, Eyewitness News. Tail. 
In Europe, this drug has been used for other cancers, including ovarian, breast, and lung, but has not been tested in the United States. Doctors say at this point they aren't sure what kind of role it might play in future cancer treatments. If you'd like more information about this treatment, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope. Make sure to write colon cancer on front. You can also find more information on our website at KLASTV.com. That's medical breakthroughs, Gary. Very good. Thanks, Polly. Time to check in now with Kevin Jansen, find out what's ahead for us. Kevin. Gary, we've got a nice evening in progress. 78 degrees at Charleston and Torrey Pines, 72 near Windmill and Paradise. Wind is calm, humidity is certainly tolerable. The zoo on North Rancho reporting 72 degrees, and it's 78 near Sahara and Nellis right now. Other neighborhood temperatures generally in the 70s, although southern and up in North Las Vegas, we've got 81 degree reading, also near Cary and Hollywood. Outside the valley is 71 in Searchlight, 78 up in Indian Springs, and 67 degrees in Sandy Valley. We showed you the wind gusts earlier. We're going to see them get a lot stronger here over the next couple of days. Let me show you some of the temperatures from around the and some of these locations reporting cooler temperatures. Boise hit 60, Salt Lake City at 64, downtown LA topping out at 73 degrees. Pretty good line of showers and thunderstorms along a cold front right here, and those are firing up in southeastern Iowa, moving across into Illinois, too. That'll be a rough area tonight with some pretty strong wind gusts. We're watching this front slide on in. You can pretty much see where the tail is, right about there. And when that comes on down, it'll increase our wind and cool us down a few degrees. Expect that by the middle of the week. Tonight, clear in 56. Not much wind tonight. That'll change by tomorrow afternoon. Even though the morning will be calm, the afternoon could see winds between 10 and 20 with a few gusts up and maybe even over 25 miles per hour. High temperature, though, should still be 80, but back into the 70s with more wind and cooler temperatures, cooler air being blown in here both Wednesday and Thursday. So we get two days in the 70s, and then we'll restore some order and get it right back to 80 <laughs> degrees by the end of the week with overnight lows in the 50s. Daylight savings time ends this weekend. Then you'll know the seasons have changed when it starts getting dark earlier. Two days of fall, and then we're back. That's it. That's all we get. Okay, thanks. Okay. Dave McCann is back and uh, talking about action on the Motor Speedway. Yeah, we need uh, the weather to get better on the weekend because we have a fast and loud weekend ahead in Southern Nevada as the National Hot Rod Association brings their fast cars back to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Gary's into this stuff. And with temperatures getting cooler, it's easy to start thinking about basketball. Constance Jinx is quietly preparing to make a whole lot of noise for the Lady Rebels. Sports is next here on Channel 8. For 90 years, we've kept Americans moving, and there's no reason to stop now. Chevrolet. Right now, get 0% financing on every new car we build, like the 2002 Chevy Cavalier. Now with $2,500 cash back or 0% financing. Cavalier offers a lot of standard features, including a CD player, and you can own one interest-free. Keep America rolling. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealer. We'll be there. When Victoria and her family were injured in a car accident, they were concerned about who would pay the hospital bills. And like many of us, they just wanted to focus on getting better and taking care of their family. I'm Ed Bernstein. At Bernstein Associates, we listen and we get results. If you've been injured in an accident, call us today. Call 384-4000. Bernstein and Associates will stand up for you. Walker Furniture breaks all the boundaries with free financing till 2004. Come join the celebration as we prepare to unveil an all-new Walker Furniture, an all-new look with an all-new selection of grand proportions, all at the lowest prices of the year, plus free financing till 2004. Not 2002 or 2003, but 2004. Powerful savings store-wide, unbeatable low prices, plus free financing till 2004. Now there's some music for your ears. Now the total artist is back. Sting. In concert. Friday, December 14th at the Aladdin Theater. Sting. Tickets are on sale now at the Aladdin Theater box office and Ticketmaster. Charge 474-4000 online at Ticketmaster.com and SFX.com. Don't miss Sting. Here. Excuse me, do you know where the art museum is? It's two blocks up. Thank you. You're in tower? 
Oh, oh yeah. Sculpture, mostly. I mean, uh, I like paintings too, but... The 2002 Mitsubishi Galant. She was helpful. Right now, pay zero down, zero interest, and zero payments for an entire year. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by American Family Insurance. All your protection under one roof. It's never too early to think about the weekend, and this weekend promises to be a fast one with the National Hot Rod Association Nationals at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. This is the second time this year the hot rods have rolled into town. Qualifying runs begin on Friday afternoon. Final eliminations start on Sunday morning. This is the second to last stop on the circuit this season. 1.9 million bucks will be on the line. Sunday was a painful day in the NFL. Detroit receiver Jermaine Crowell blew out his knee. Carolina running back Tim Biakabatuka broke his foot. And Bears star receiver Marcus Robinson tore his ACL and MCL in his left knee. On that play, he's out for the season. Huge blow to the Bears because they're 4-1, and one, their best start in 10 years, and they're in first place in the NFC Central. Tough sport. The Lady Rebels are preseason ranked 22nd in the annual Street and Smith's Basketball Magazine. Forward Linda Frulick is a big reason why, but as Chris Matthews reports, guard Constance Jinx will play a big role in UNLV's success. For all concerned, UNLV's best basketball may be ahead of them. Arguably, the Rebels have the best point guards in the conference. We know about Banks. How about Jenks? Constance has really matured a lot, and it's, it's shown on the basketball court here in the first few uh, days of practice. The junior guard from Chicago is being counted on big time. Her teammate, Linda Frulick's credentials speak for themselves. Jenks isn't mentioned in any preseason publications, and that's fine with her. That just gives me a, you know, a, just pumps me up even more to do better. I mean, I know the accomplishments that I've made. Jenks brings her own list of accomplishments to the table, 12 points a game and a nice lot of assists and steals. She was the first player off the bench as a freshman two years ago and maybe the best point guard in the conference. She's by far the quickest guard in the conference. Uh, Constance, I think, have grown into the game. She's learned a lot. I think Constance is going to show all of them that she is one of the top players in our conference. Coach Miller will use Jenks at the point. Also, she'll help at the shooting guard position. Her off-season work is paying off. She's stronger, quicker, and more mature. You know, she feels as though she has an opportunity to prove herself. And when you put a challenge in front of her, she certainly steps up most of the time. And I'm just doing everything I can to make us, you know, get recognized at, the, at this point. And that's all, just work hard. So while practice continues, Jenks will silently go about her business because later, wins will certainly speak louder than words. Chris Matthews, Channel 8 Eyewitness Sports. Thank you, Chris. The Lady Rebels begin their season on November 16th at the Cox Pavilion against Cal State Fullerton. The Running Rebels open up a day later at the Thomas and Mac against Wisconsin. Hey, it's just about here, basketball season. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Dave. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. <laughs> Sorry. Neighborhood Weather is sponsored by Carina Corporation. We build the homes you see in your dreams. Grandma, can we go play? Okay, but be careful. We will. Bye-bye. That is the scene you did. It's just I would know her anywhere. Excuse me, aren't you the senior dimensions lady? Yes, I am. James, I told you that was her. You might say we became members because of you. <laughs> then, of course, there's the fact that senior dimensions gives us all the coverage that we need. And some of us need more coverage than others. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. That's it. No more nutrition classes for you. Well, if you join me more often in my nutrition and fitness classes, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Health education and wellness from Senior Dimensions. It's our way of taking preventive care one step further. Discover Senior Dimensions for quality, dependable care. And count on us to put your health back in capable hands. Yours. Take hold of your own health care. Call today to learn more about Senior Dimensions. Now's the time to save on a new Kia during Courtesy's gigantic Triple Down event. Put 1250 down on a new Sophia, get 1250 in Kia rebates, and another 1250 from Courtesy. Own it for just $72.95 or lease from just $129 a month. Triple your down payment on every new Kia in stock. $1,500 down on a new Sportage gets you $4,500 off the price. Own it for just $11,245. A new luxurious Optima from just $13,674. Kia is the car, and Courtesy is the place during the gigantic Triple Down event at Courtesy in Henderson and Las Vegas. The Valley Auto Mall sells more cars and trucks than anyone else in Nevada. In fact, that one's ours. Oh, so are those. And all of these. 
With 14 dealerships, 21 brands, and thousands of new and used cars and trucks all in one location, <laughs> no wonder we're everywhere. The Valley Auto Mall in Henderson, US 95 to Sunset, or I-215 to Gibson. Oh, there goes another one, a and another, and another. Tonight, George is going to give you an early Halloween fright. This is the most haunted room in the in the hotel, room 109. People get sick to their stomach and leave. Seeing uh, people in the windows, a horrible feeling that something wasn't right here. You can feel certain things. Real ghost stories from one of the most haunted places on earth. George Knapp with an all-new I-Team exclusive investigation. Tonight at 11 on Eyewitness News.